What is happening, people? Hey, guys, we at the lake today. It is uh, up about 10 o'clock, 10.30. Got a little late start this morning. And uh, we're going to come to this concrete wall right here. Always remember, in the summertime, you got deep water, you got structure, great place to find crack. And we did pretty good a few days back on this wall. We came down the lake. We're going to start here, and we're going to work some other places throughout the lake and see if we can string together a nice mess of fish today. Guys, stay with it. Look at that. Already. Hey, hey, how it goes? If you want to put fish in the boat, put Nate afloat. Boy, he done already got one. I ain't even started the video. What's really going on? Look at that. Uh, boom. All right, hey. Dennis. Glitz. Oh, got the glitz going on there. Got the glitz. Hey, guys, stay with us and I hope you enjoy the video. Not the biggest thing in the world, but he is a keeper. We were putting some fish in the pot today. He's about nine and three quarter inches. Crappy right there. Throw him in the pot. Let him bounce around in there. He hit it going down. Yeah, that's, that's what they're supposed to do. You know? Got a little weight to him. Feels like he's fighting you. Get him. That old pig right there, boy. Grace. That crap. He wanted it. He wanted it. <clears throat> he wanted that old glitz. Got that glitz color again. Yeah. People ask me about the uh, my fishing outfit that I use, that's a 1,000 Sienna reel. And it's loaded with six pound test line. I think this is six. I go four and six, two sometimes. And uh, that is a 10 foot ACC crappy stick. Fairly loose drag as you can see. Now we fish in 24 foot. So I have a small split shot up the line. You can see it right there, small split shot. And that is a 1 32nd head. Get it back over here. That is a 132nd head right there. And I've got that lure bit off a little bit because I'm trying to get more out of a lure. Don't tell Dennis I bite them off. And, uh, you know, I, I bite it off, get another hook set in it, try to catch a few more fish with it. Now, that, that split shot is probably a 16th, maybe a little bit more, maybe probably 16th, maybe 316th. And these fish are in 22, 24 feet of water. And when I pitch this out at 10 or 12 feet, I'm counting about 18 to 20 seconds and it's in the strike zone. So that tells you it's sinking fairly slow even with the split shot. So when fish get that deep, you have to add some weight to your lure. And I've got it about 16 inches above the lure, so it really doesn't affect the lure's action if I give the rod a little twitch you know, the lure, the lure's still gonna twitch with that, but it has some effect, but not too much to hurt the lure action. Now, I've said this multiple times, but this 10-foot rod, I have fished with it so much. I could pitch out there about 25, 30 feet with it and uh, use it about like a regular seven foot rod and you know just vertical jigging nate's over top of the wall over there he's fishing on the he's fishing in the back door over there and, uh, that's how you get him out the back door right there over on the back side of the wall he would hit it a little he probably followed it too we like atf we go in the front door and the back door all at the same time Cutting up, y'all. Racing. Oh, yeah. Oh, 
come up here and see old Papa. Look at that ACC strappy stick. Swing that old crappy up in there. Ah, uh, boom. Good fish right there. See the lure in his mouth? A uh, boom. You know, summertime. Look at that fish. Boom. Look, he's in the back door again. Look, I'm telling you, summertime, you come out to these lakes, pick your days, and you can catch a lot of crappie, especially they're schooled up this time of year. Have a lot of fun, catch a lot of fish. Look at that. Ah, uh, boom. Grace can't hardly get the cooler top down. I guess it gives them freedom to go back and forth. There you go. Look at that thing they're coming out from under that wall. Oh my goodness, I went way up. Sneaking up, sneaking up on them. It feels like it's got a little weight to it. Man, y'all see that crappy? He jumped like a bat. The word. Come on up here. Well, that's a good one right there, y'all. Mm -hmm. Look at that. That banana pepper. I'm telling you, y'all ain't got banana pepper in your tackle box. You better go online, lakecountrybaits.com, get you some banana pepper, and put it in your tackle box. That thing catches fish in clear water, muddy water, stained water. It don't make no difference. That, that's a good color. Now, not all the time they key in on banana pepper, but sometimes that is my go-to color. When the fishing gets tough, I just happen to have this one on, tied on, and, uh, you know, I start fishing with it. Outtake this course over there uh, next to the community. That's why I, I swear I believe they're coming out that other side. They think that he's on the other side. They think they think that, they think that he is. Oh, look, he got a handicap now. Look at his nose. Pug nose. Yeah, old pug. Like a shit zoo. Pomeranian, maybe that's yeah. it. That's the glitz. I don't know if you can see the glitter in it or not. Turn it. Glitz. I seen him run over that door. He hit it on the fall. Last video I talked about techniques. Good fish. Talked about techniques that you use very subtly. You know, I talk about subtle techniques that you use. Is that a good one? Yeah, All right. Uh, subtle techniques that you use when uh, you're jigging, and I just caught that particular fish. You know, I had pitched it over there and let it come through the strike zone. And I had picked up on it, picked up on it, got a little bit of a bite, and I kept it in the strike zone. And I just kept lifting it up. Well, I got to a certain point, I know that the crappy one will follow me, and I just started lowering that rod. Remember early in the video, I said, yeah, sometimes you lower that rod, lower that rod, lower that rod, and boom, he come up there and hit it. So it's not necessarily fishing, it's casting over there and winding the lure straight back. You got a lot of different techniques that you can use that you can utilize to give that lure different actions in the water to make you successful. That's what sets you apart from other fishermen. Oh, I'm, I'm a, I, know, I know why I'm not getting bit. I'm on the bottom. Man. Oh, really? Yeah. That's why I ain't getting bit. Nothing on that that banana pepper. 
gracious. Mm -hmm. Good, nine and three quarter, almost 10. You know, I'm, I've noticed we catch fish since we have live scope, because I can see them. They come over and follow in the lure. Sometimes if you begin to raise that rod at a medium speed up, they'll run up there and bite it. Not all the time, but sometimes. But <clears throat> you don't, if you don't have live scope and you know you're fishing and fish and you cast out there, you're vertical jigging, you know, a few times, pick that rod up. See if you get, makes a difference in getting a bite. I know at Kerr Lake, fishing around the bridge a lot of times, even with minnows, you can get that minnow or the lure down in the fish and they just kind of, it's like the minnow or the lure is just part of the, the group and you'll begin to just lift that rod up. I mean, you know, if you got a six or seven foot rod, you lift that rod up in the water column like this, lift it, lift it, lift it. Sometimes you get a bite and then lower it real slow back down in there like a bait dime. Sometimes you get bit on the up swing, sometimes you get bit on the down swing. So that's just some things that you can do. You don't necessarily need live scope to do that. Anchor rope. Broke me. What did she say? What's wrong with you? No, I just said okay. She said I was asking. Oh, got a little weight right here, boy. Where? Yeah, come on up. Oh, don't you shake off that, buddy. Yes, sir. Yeah. Ah, uh, boom, that's a good fish right there. Caught him on that banana pepper with that chartreuse tail. I'm sticking with it, that's what I'm catching them on, y'all.